Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai, India. Hello citizens of the internet. Today in this second part of my series on postpartum hemorrhage, I am going to discuss the diagnosis and management of postpartum hemorrhage. Please watch the first part before watching this part. The main problem with diagnosis of PPH is its metric definition. Estimation of blood loss after delivery is an inexact science. A study in USA using a delivery model has shown that blood loss is underestimated by 16% when the blood loss is less than 300 ml and by almost 40% when it is greater than 2 liters. In other words, the greater the blood loss, higher the underestimation. I will now discuss at length the various methods that we used in clinical practice to estimate blood loss. The most commonly used method for determination of blood loss is visual estimation. A fully soaked 10 by 10 gauze piece signifies a loss of 30 ml of blood. When it is 3 fourths soaked, it is 20 ml. When half soaked, it is 10 ml. And when only 1 fourth soaked, it is 5 ml as shown in the pictures here. Another approximate method that is used is to weigh the pads before and after. The blood loss is given by the formula wet weight minus the dry weight gives the blood loss in ml. Another standardized visual estimation we use in India is that a fully soaked sari or a sarong definitely indicates postpartum hemorrhage that is a blood loss of 500 ml. Remember because the bleeding in postpartum hemorrhage can be ongoing visual estimation must be repeated from time to time. Various fluid collection bags are available that can be used to measure blood loss at the time of delivery. These are brass V which is a plastic calibrated receptacle that is placed under the patient's buttock to measure blood loss. Another similar device is a Kelly's pad as shown here. By no means are these methods accurate but this is all that one can do in a clinical setting. For more details please refer to my book Modern Obstetrics the chapter on postpartum hemorrhage. Talking about visual estimation of blood loss, in a lighter vein, I am reminded of a saying. The actual blood loss is half the anesthesiologist's estimate and twice the surgeon's estimate. I will now discuss the clinical features of PPH, mainly the atonic type. Vaginal bleeding is usually revealed as a continuous trickle of blood or a copious flow or passage of huge blood clots. Occasionally, it may be concealed as clots accumulate in the uterus or vagina or a broad ligament hematoma forms. This is referred to as occult PPH and this makes diagnosis difficult. On general examination, signs of shock depend on the amount of bleeding and pre-delivery hemoglobin levels. There may be severe pallor, cold clammy skin, hypertension, and tachycardia. Shock index, which is the ratio of heart rate and systolic blood pressure, is greater than 0.9 or 1.1. It should be noted that vital signs may remain normal until more than 30% of blood volume is lost. When excessive vaginal bleeding is encountered, the first thing one must do is to put a hand on the patient's lower abdomen. If the uterus is flabby and soft and over distended, it indicates atonic postpartum hemorrhage. But remember, a full bladder may obscure this finding. 
squeezing the uterus leads to gush of clotted blood from vagina on the other hand if the uterus is firmly contracted like a cricket ball it suggests a traumatic cause keep in mind that sometimes both the causes may be present local that is per vaginal examination will show that in atonic postpartum hemorrhage the blood is dark red in color whereas in traumatic postpartum hemorrhage it is bright red cervical lacerations paraurethral tears can be detected by local examination remember continuous close observation of the patient is very important as slow trickling is highly dangerous following investigations must be done blood for grouping cross matching hemoglobin and hematocrit weiner's clot observation test is a simple bedside test for diagnosis of coagulopathy and investigations for dic such as serum fibrinogen and serum fibrin degradation products coming to treatment of postpartum hemorrhage i will first talk about its prevention postpartum hemorrhage is an obstetric emergency with potential catastrophic outcome and thus must be prevented at all costs prophylactic measures should not only be taken for high risk patients but also for all normal patients one important preventive measure not emphasized in the medical literature is to avoid home deliveries which are still common in rural india and there is also a big home delivery movement in usa remember home deliveries are for pizzas and not for babies i will now discuss the prophylactic measures in detail prophylactic measures which can be taken in the antenatal period are good and early antenatal care treatment of anemia and malnutrition which is a very important prophylactic measure and early detection and prompt treatment of high risk factors for pph intranatal prophylactic measures are keep blood grouped and cross matched active management of third stage of labor is the most important prophylactic measure for atonic postpartum hemorrhage one must also avoid prolonged or obstructed labor close observation of the patient in the fourth stage of labor examination of placenta and membranes for completeness and exploration of genital tract for trauma are the important prophylactic measures in the postnatal period since it is the most important preventive measure i will elaborate on the active management of third stage of labor in short amstel components of amstel are administration of ecbolic agent such as oxytocin 10 international units given intramuscularly or intravenously within 1 minute of delivery of the baby 1 to 3 minute delay in cord clamping delivery of placenta by controlled cord traction and massaging of the uterus from time to time which may be done by the sister or by the patient herself amstel reduces the risk of pph by about 60% this is a grade a recommendation various uterotonic or ecbolic agents which are used for prophylactic treatment of postpartum hemorrhage are intravenous oxytocin infusion 10 to 20 minutes in 500 ml of ringer's lactate which is usually the drug of choice or injection methagen 0.2 mg intramuscularly or injection 15 as 15 methyl pgf2 alpha that is prostodin 125 micrograms given intramuscularly or mesoprostol that is prostaglandin e1 cytotec 600 to 800 micrograms given orally or per rectum or carbitocin 100 micrograms given as intravenous 
bolus over 1 minute in my opinion the drug of choice in low resource country like india is misoprostol which is available as oral tablets and does not require refrigeration like injection oxytocin uniject is a special injection device containing oxytocin that has been developed specifically for use in resource limited settings such as southeast asia for prophylactic treatment of pph the device can be used by minimally trained personnel such as an auxiliary nurse midwife and stored at room temperature for up to 2 months i will end part 2 over here and discuss the therapeutic management of postpartum hemorrhage and treatment of intractable postpartum hemorrhage in part 3 for further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology refer to the following books written by me practical obstetrics and gynecology 5th edition modern obstetrics 2nd edition modern gynecology 2nd edition clinical cases in obstetrics questions and answers second edition clinical cases in gynecology questions and answers second edition and pelvic reconstructive surgery if you have found this video useful and informative please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking here